big constituency of brethren out there in different parts of the world who, li- who feed from this altar. They feed from this altar and they are tuned in and they are seated behind their computers or their smart uh, televisions or their smartphones. Some of them at work, others as they drive, and others have woken up to team up with us over this message. And I want to welcome them in the name of Jesus. Those are our online viewers, our online brethren, members who watch us online. May the Lord bless you. May you team up with us in the next uh, one hour. And the Lord will bless you wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus. And you that is here, and you those who watch us on television, and those who watch us on YouTube, I pray that the Lord will equally bless you and prosper you wherever you are. The Lord is exactly where you are. He is with us here and he's omnipresent. He is there and I want you to welcome yourself, I mean to to make yourself comfortable in the presence of the Lord as the word of the Lord comes forth. Let's pray. Jehovah God, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for the opportunity to bring the word today. I want to thank you because this is not a message that I put up together. This is not just something that I cooked. You gave us a command at the turn of the year and Lord as I expect Found the, the word, the covenant word for 2021. Oh my God, in this Sunday and coming Sunday and on 31st, I pray that you will use me so that people will gain a heart and a mind of understanding. For only after we understand your covenant word for 2021 can we be beneficiaries of the blessing that are tied to the covenant word. And therefore, your Lord, use me to your glory and to your praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give me Isaiah. We will read it when we are standing and then you would sit down as I preach. Isaiah chapter number 54 and verses 2. Isaiah chapter number 54 and verses 2. The Lord is good. The Lord is excellent. The Lord gives us four things. He gave us the word for the decade that it will be the decade of restoration last year. And this, therefore, we are still in the period of recovery. We are in the period of recovery, and we will recover all. But for 2021, we have a covenant word, and the Lord tells us to do four things in preparation for that. The first one is, we are commanded by the Lord, we are expected by the Lord to do what? Number one, enlarge the place of your tent. You and me are supposed to do one, enlarge the place of our tents in preparation for what the Lord is going to do and the restoration and the recovery that is bringing to our lives. Number two, he is saying that we should do what? Come on, we should stretch out the curtains of our dwellings. And we should not spare. You should stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. And I dealt with that last Sunday. And he says, number three, you are supposed to do what? You are supposed, we are supposed to lengthen the cords to accommodate what is coming your way. Span, you know, you spread out. Lengthen the what? Your cords. And number four, and the last one, after you have enlarged the place of your tent, after you have stretched out the curtains of your dwelling, after you have done what? You have stretched out the ropes, lengthen them, then do what? Strengthen the stakes. For you will spread to the right and to the left. And our descendants will dispossess. That is to take over and recover what, you know, you know we, we have to do that. We have to, we have to possess and make the desolate cities what? In Abedar again. We have to bring life. And therefore, I want you to know this. These four things I shared with you. The first two. Enlarge the place of your tent. And then I went, by the, time was, uh, by the time time was over last Sunday, I dealt with what? Letting them, you know, stretch the curtains of your dwelling. Now you may take your seats as I begin dealing with number three. Number three is lengthening your what? Your cords. Lengthening your cords. Just for the sake of those who are visiting, like our sister who wasn't there last Sunday, and many others who traveled or went for missions, it is important for me to make you understand that we dealt with 
we say that some of the blessings that are coming your way, some of the restoration and the recovery that God is bringing your way, you will not succeed on your own. You will need to let others, the Bible says, let them, let them do what? Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Some of you will need to enter, and I talked about partnerships, and I read Luke chapter 5, and I talked about partnerships in 2021 and uh, onwards. I said, some of you, your company will not become profitable until you partner with another. I said, some of you, you will need to enter into strategic partnerships so that you can do what? So that you can prosper in whatever you are doing. And I don't want to repeat what I shared that time, but partnership is key. Partnership is key in personal and corporate development. It is very important. It takes the partnership of a husband and his wife for them to get children in their marriage. It takes the partnership of a seed and the soil for you to grow a crop and get a harvest. Partnership is everywhere. God has demonstrated in deeper levels the importance of what? Partnerships. You have two legs that partner to take you where you want to go. Try to go with one leg, and you will still arrive there, but you'll arrive late. You will find yourself partnering with a crutch so that you have equilibrium and you can walk and advance from point A to point B. For us to be able to walk from here to the gate and from the kitchen, the living room to the, to the kitchen, the Lord has the Lord has, in his own way, given us two legs. So that we can hold things firmly, the Lord has given us two hands. So that we can swallow food. The teeth can, your teeth and my teeth can crush the food. But they have to partner with the throat to push it down. And partner with the stomach to digest that food. You are in partnership with your body. When your body is in partnership, when every part is working in partnership with every other part of your body and my body, then you don't go to see a doctor because your body is what? In partnership. And we usually use a medical term and say, you are perfect in health because every faculty of your life is in partnership and functioning well. Two eyes make you see better. The Lord is a God of partnerships. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But today I don't want to go back to partnerships. Partnerships. You will need, I will probably one day talk about or preach a message on strategic partnerships like I preached some years back. Today I want us to go to point number three. Lengthen your what? Lengthen your cords. You can see it there on Isaiah 52. After enlarging the place of your tent, creating opportunities, you know, it says, and stretching out your curtains, the Bible says, lengthen your cords. I want it to write number three. Lengthen your cords. This means you stretch this year. If you want to recover what you have lost, if I want to recover what I have lost, if I want the restoration of the years that the locusts have eaten, if I want to, rest, to recover my lost business opportunities, if I want to lose my ministry, if I want to recover my lost preaching opportunities, like the missions that I had in different countries that I canceled in 2020 because of COVID-19. If a com your company needs to recover, the Bible says this year you have to engage into an activity number three. That is what? Lengthening your what? your cords that means you stretch yourself to the limits you need to stretch yourself corona may have left you rigid corona may have dealt a big blow and each one of us has been affected by coronavirus and its negative effects but i tell you the truth it is not time to 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 sit it is time to what to lengthen the cords that is to stretch ourselves to the limits 
and develop levels of elasticity. You need to stretch your brains. You need to stretch your mind. You need to stretch yourself to the limit. And I will bring scripture to you to help you understand. What does it mean to lengthen your cords? Let's go to Luke chapter number 5 and verses number 36. It will help me to bring the message home. This is a teaching and teachings are usually very interesting because a teacher must go slow and must make everybody understand. Are we together? Luke chapter number 5 verses 36 to 39. What does the Bible say? The Bible says the scriptures are on the screen. It says, then, this is Jesus, he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece of a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also, the piece that was taken out of the new does not match. That is common sense, right? No one takes an, a piece of cloth that is new and sews it into an old what? Into an old garment. Because the new one will cause a tear. Why? The other one is used up. The other one is old. The other one has outlived its usefulness. The new one is as an opportunity. It's fresh. The fabric is still tight. And therefore, for you to maintain the fabric and not lose it, then a new garment can only be new, but it cannot be compromised or mixed up together with an old one. That is Jesus saying that. You don't put an old, you don't put a new piece. No one puts a piece of a new garment on an old one. It will be chapati. It will be an old chapati. The next verse says, Jesus continues to say, and no one puts new wine into what? An old wine skin, or else the new wine will burst the wine skins and be spilled, and the wine skin will be ruined. Give me the next verse. I'll come to that because that will be my major point on that. But new wine, what does the Bible say? But new wine must be put into a new wine skin, and both are what? Are preserved. They will be preserved because both the wine skin and the wine is new. And that means there is elasticity. There is room for what? For expansion. Give me the last verse, 39. The Bible says, you know, and no one, hey, hey, this is where I want to really dwell. No one having drunk old wine immediately desires new. Let's read what the Bible says. For he says, the old is better. When you are in love with your old, you become an enemy to the new. I don't know whether some of you are like some people that I know. They are loyal to Kittigat water. They loved the shape of the bottle. They fell in love with Kittigat. So even when Aquafio, a new company, brings a new design of a bottle, they say, me, I love Kittigat bottles. And if you open this bottle of water for them to drink, they will not drink. Because the first thing they will do, there's no corona in this bottle. When you give them the water to drink from Aquafio, this is not Kirigat company, water company, purified drinking water, the first thing they do when you give it to them, when you tell them to drink, Come on this side so that people can see. When you tell them to drink this water, the first thing they do is, well, look at what it does. <laughs> look at it. He just did it right. 
The water is fresh. But before he drinks it, he wants to check whether it is the company that he loves. It is pure mineral water. It is good and certified for drinking. No one who is used to drinking what? Old wine, Kirigat, or Dasani for that matter, because there are international people who don't know what Kirigat is. Kirigat is a Kenyan brand. In Molo, we saw where the factory is, but Dasani is Coca Cola. It's international, so they understand. There are people who fell in love with Coca Cola drinking water, that is Dasani. And they will not drink another, even if it is better. The Bible says no one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new. For he says, the old is better. If you are going to enlarge the place of your tent, if you are going to allow other people to partner with you to go to new horizons, if you are going to lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, I tell you the truth, you have to know that God is saying, behold, I knew I'm doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. 2020 will not be your 2021. The things that you went through in 2020 are not the things you will go through 2021. The Lord is doing a new thing. My brother, can you enjoy the aquafield water? Because it is as good as the Kirigat and the Dasani that you are used to. Are you willing to embrace the new or are you an old wine skin? Are you willing to embrace what God is willing to do in your life? Do you have the room? Have you enlarged the place of your tent? Are you willing to create new room for God to do things differently? God does not change, but his ways change. Hallelujah. That is why all the blind people that were healed by Jesus in the Bible... He used different methods to heal them. Some of them he plastered their eyes that he told them to go and wash. And when pastors were beginning plastering ministries in the national, plastering prophetic apostolic ministries in the national, or church in the national, Jesus changed it to telling another one, receive your what? Your sight. So the ones who had built a cathedral or a, a, or a ministry over the plastering of eyes that are blind, they found themselves out of business because Jesus used different methods. Some of you are very rigid. Okay, they are not in the service today. Some of you are very rigid. You have been sleeping in the same position in your bed for the last 15 years until your mattress has has drawn your head where it lies, your back where it lies. You can even count your ribs on your mattress. That's why I was looking on this side. <laughs> Some of you cannot sleep on a different way. They can't. Where you sleep, you can If you sleep like that, you are mat- on this side, your mattress has drawn your the day you will sell it to somebody or give it to another person, they will have to really do a lot of work in trying to remove your portrait on the mattress. People are very rigid. People don't like change. And change is not change until it changes you. In this year, 2021, we have to enlarge the place of your tent and allow other people into your life and lengthen the what? Come on, the court. You have to become a new wine skin. Forget about the old, is, forget about saying the old is better. The sunny has served you very well, but if there is no the sunny in a shop, don't go home without water because aquafil is there. Take it on with you. There's no need of going back home without water. And then you are asked, you never brought water. Oh, I never found Dasani. I only found another one. And another one is... Some of you, your bed has been facing the same direction since you bought it. Retire it. 
Change positions. Oh, that is where the switch is. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so that I can prepare myself for the changes that God brings. Ask my wife. I change a lot of things. So that I don't de develop a catcher. Let me show you how cultures be. Let me tell you how cultures are developed. It begins with a behavior. Level number one. Just behaving in a certain way. Then that behavior, if it's not changed, develops. It mutates like corona. It mutates to character. It becomes your character. What? Your behavior turns into what? Come on. Your character. Your character forms a system of beliefs that we call culture. Because culture is simply a what? A certain way of thinking in a community. It's their culture. You hear people say, oh, it's their what? It's their culture. It's a system of beliefs. It is started with what? Number one, level number one? It is started with, talk to me somebody. It is started with what? Just behavior. They started behaving in a certain way, in a certain village. Everybody. They started behaving like that. Then with, it continued and continued. It mutated to become what? They are what? The character of the people in that area. When that character is not changed, what does it mutate into? The third level, it becomes a what? A system of beliefs. What we call a system of beliefs? Culture. And then culture shapes the behavior of every other new coming generation. Even if you buy a plot in that area, the culture, the system of beliefs, if you buy a plot in that estate, they start telling you in this estate, come on, in this development, in this area, we don't do this, we don't do this, we do things this way. They bring you Namakumi, they start telling you Namakumi is like this, they, Nambakumi. They, they, bring you this, they bring you in their world. What they are trying to bring you into is the what? The culture of that place, whether it's an estate or a village or an area or a community. Then, cultures make communities. Mm-hmm. Am I turning this into a classroom? What's wrong with it? Just simple behaviors. Turn into a character. They mutate into a what? Into a culture. And a culture develops into a what? A community of people. That's why in Kenya we play with very dangerous statements and you will hear them. The Kamba Nation, the Meru Nation, the Kalijin Nation, the Meru, the, 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 the Kisi Nation, mm -hmm. the Mijikenda Nation, uh -huh. the Mborana Nation, the Somali Nation. There's nothing wrong with it, but those are what? Balkanized areas based on a certain way of doing things. And it shapes their behavior. And everybody who is born in that community must behave like that. The other day we were driving to Meru. And I, I, was, I was very tempted. Can I confess my sin? From Chuka people were selling Mira on the road. Then we went to all those places. Oh, Mira, Mira. So I also bought a bunch of Mira. <laughs> Bishop, you, you bought Mira? I decided to promote their business. <laughs> I bought a bunch of Mira and put it on the dashboard, the way they like putting it on the dashboard, because I'm in their area. Put it there. Then, I, then there was a temptation. Do I test it or do I not? That's why the Bible says we pray every day. Lead us not. <laughs> you can sit down, son. That's why the Bible says we pray every day. See, now, what you see around you forms your what? Your thinking. And your thinking becomes the, rock, the bedrock of behavior. Bishop Mbai was carrying Mira on the dashboard. 
I have to confess, I had two. <laughs> because I wanted to know, and God knows I never liked it. So the rest of them, I became very generous and donated to another guy who was chewing them. Yeah. <laughs> and he thanked me and he told me, God bless you. And you cannot tell me that blessing never came through. The culture of a region forms a community. And communities make a nation, the Republic of Kenya. Forms a nation. And a nation forms a continent. We have a continent called Africa. And there are people who think every African is the same. Because we are from where? Africa. Bill Gates' wife said she became a prophetess, you know, when Corona hit the world. And she says, I see Africans dead like flies in the streets. And we servants of God stood and wrote, wrote a statement and we answered Bill Gates' wife, Melinda Gates, and told her, the way you think and see Africa is not the way God sees Africa. Africans are not children of a lesser God. We are children of God and we are not going to die in the streets of Africa. And I want to repeat and tell Melinda Gates, we are not dying like flies because we have a God we may not have a lot of money but we can pray you we can pray a miracle we can pray something through in Jesus name and our faith is strong in God some of you have still been keeping some clothes like me that you don't even need because they were the highlight of your dresses and your suits in 1978. You cannot let go. I'm telling you the truth, you cannot let go. Some of the shoes, they don't even fit you, but you, you are in love with them, you just keep them there. And let me tell you the truth, if you are that kind of brother and sister I'm describing, even matter spirit, even when people are fasting for 40 days, you will join them on the third week because you are still wondering whether you should join in or not. It's your culture. Those are the people who you go to pray with for somebody who is sick. And as you lay your hands on the person, they, they ask you, then what if he doesn't get healed or she doesn't get healed? Those are the same people who when it's their turn to pray, they say, God, if it is your will, if it is your will for this brother to be healed, please heal him. I remember stopping a brother in the middle of prayer. We were praying for somebody sick. And this brother, I made the biggest mistake of my life by asking, transferring my faith to him. I told him, pray for the sick, lay hands on the sick. We were holding hands and I told him, okay, lay your hand on the sick. And the, our hands were on the seat and the other ones we are holding our hand. The remaining hand we are holding together. And we, are, we had our hand on the sick and I told him, brother, pray. Then he says, God, we thank you because you are Jehovah God. And today we have come to pray for this brother. And we are praying that you will do be, you be God. If it is your will, I even never allowed him to finish. I stopped him. I told him, shut up in the middle of prayer. I took over. I come with you to pray for some who is sick and you are saying if it is God's will. It became God's will when in Isaiah 43 and verses 5, God said, by his stripes we are healed. It is the will of God to heal people. Whether they get healed or not, when you are praying for the sick, you need to know that God says by his stripes we are healed healed. That gives you the courage to pray for the sick whether you are ordained or not, whether you serve in the church or not, you can pray for the sick because it is the will of God to heal the sick. In this year of 2021 
Each one of us is supposed to prepare yourself to become a wine, a new wine skin. So that God can put new wine in your life. But when you are maintaining the same set of friends, same key, set of friends, Tamaka seriously, the same eating habits, some of you have a plate under your bed. You have a chapati under your bed. You have some donuts under your bed and you are not expectant. Only expectant mothers have a right to eat because they are two in one or three in one if they are carrying twins. But some brothers who are skinny, as skinny as a mosquito, they, are, they love food more than they love themselves. <laughs> They wake up, how many, of, how, many, how many of you want to be honest enough not to lift up their hands? How many of you found themselves waking up in the middle of the night to go and eat something? Don't lift up your hands. You maintain the same eating habits and you expect to enlarge the place of your tent? No. You maintain the same old friends that make you sink in the middle of the sea. That have taught you to gossip. That are, that are pulling you backwards than taking you forward in 2021 and expect to lengthen your cords. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You sleep at the same hour. Wake up at the same hour. People who want to enlarge or want to lengthen their cords must wake up at a different hour of the morning. Must sleep at a different hour of the morning, of the evening. You cannot eat from January to December and expect to lengthen your what? Your cords or enlarge the place of your tent. You eat from January. You have a gift of food. No. Seriously, some of them are demons. They are what? I'm, on, I'm, I'm hard. Am I okay? Some of them are, are demons. No. 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 And yes, Samosa, today I will sit on your head. I will look at you and I will not eat you because you control my life. Right? Yeah. I don't know. 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 Bible says, be renewed by the, trans be transformed by the renewing of your word. Come on, of your mind. Your thinking systems must change in 2021. My thinking systems must change in 2021 if I want to lengthen my cords and strengthen my stakes. My preaching style and my preaching must also go deeper in 2021. If I don't want to bore you to death. Same levels of prayer and fasting. That you have heard that have not helped you. This is a plate of food. And from heating the food in the kitchen. Until you are done. When you, are in the, when you serve it on the table. In the name of testing it. Who made you a tester? To. Father. For the food that we are about to take. I bless you. In Jesus name. To praying Lord. I've already slept. It's your business to take care of me. Amen. Such prayers are good. They give you a form of godliness. 
But the Bible says you are denying what? The power thereof. No wonder when a lizard crawls over your head during the night, you say, Mommy! You know, because you don't know how to call God. <laughs> you scream as if somebody was cutting your eyes off. Because you don't know how to connect with God as you go to sleep. No wonder when you are sleeping, because you never cover your night with prayer. It's just a routine prayer. Father, I'm about to snore, and before I start snoring now, take over. Then you find yourself being choked. Your dreams are collapsing when you are falling from a very high building. You dream with snakes coming to eat you because you never took care of those snakes before you went to bed. Change your prayers. Religious prayers will not enlarge the place of your tent. Can I hear an amen? Religious prayers will not enlarge the place of your tent. They will not stretch out your curtains. If you fast and by 11 a.m., you can't stand still because you are about to collapse. You need an usher to go with you every time. So waiting for 6 p.m. <laughs> you, know, you know, come on, challenge that spirit in Jesus' name. It's a spirit that wants you to be weak. It's a spirit that wants to deny you power. Come on, lay hands on your tummy and tell your stomach, you will not control my spiritual atmosphere. Amen. In Jesus' name. I'm going to give you some things that you need to do, probably. In 2021, <clears throat> that will help you and help me to lengthen your cords. Number one, some of you, for your cords to be longer than they have ever been, you may need to go back to school. That's number one. For some of you to lengthen your cords and enlarge the place of your tent, in 2021, you need to go back to school. My goodness, I hate exams. And I'm not alone. Especially Christians who are born again and go to charismatic churches and spiritual churches and Pentecostal churches and uh, New Testament churches. They, they don't like exams. Because everything is shouting and yelling and confessing victory while you are living in defeat. Na kusema umemuona mungu na ujamuona miezi mitatu. And you are taught to fake it until it becomes real. That's a statement from hell. You don't fake it. We need to be real. Some of you get real and go back to school. Number one, I'll tell you that. Go back to school. If you have a certificate... Come on. Enroll for what? For diploma. If you have a diploma, enroll for a degree course. You eat more money in restaurants than you need to pay for your degree or your diploma. Okay, Kenya mpya. Muguyako ina kwambia ingia tu ndani waulize utaulizia kule inaenda ukifika ndani na unalipa pesa ujui kule inaenda na umelipa pesa Mwingine akikwambia naenda village market kwa sababu anajua kila kitu anaenda kununua somebody knows what they are going to buy in the village market the one that's superior malls in Kenya You start saying even me I'll prove to you Have you seen brothers I'll prove to you by going to the village market this weekend what are you going to do you don't even know where to start. Haven't you ever seen brothers who have married before their time because they want to prove to another brother they can get married? And after they have gotten married, they, they don't know what to do with the marriage. Go back to school. Go back to school. You take loans to buy suits. You have taken... Pulisa. You have been pulisering a lot of money to eat mandazi. 
Why don't you police that? To lengthen your cords by going back to school. Why don't you go to Mswari to go back to school to pay her for a certain course? It is not a must that you do a four-year course or two-year course. No, there are colleges where you can enroll for two subjects only to lengthen your cords. I'm talking about myself. I have ever desired to be a lawyer and I've studied law a little bit, but I will still go before I drop dead in this world, I will still go back to do my what? My law degree. I was given an opportunity to go to Biola University to do clinical psychology some several years back when we were studying the church and offered a job before I started and I, in California. And I quit. I, I never went. I will still need to do clinical psychology one day. I don't care whether I go with them, Kongojo. Mr. Maruga went to class one when he was eight or something. Become the Maruga this year and lengthen your cords. If you are in business and workers continue stealing from you, or you employ an accountant who steals your money professionally, go and enroll for what? Accounting lesson. Then run away before the exams come. Because you just wanted to study to get the knowledge of how to keep your books. Can I, can I hear an amen? At least I saved you for the exam. I saved you from the exam. Go to a driving school even if you don't own a wheelbarrow. Even if you belong to the wheelbarrow party. Go to a driving school. Get a driver's license. And in your prayer time, lay the license before God and say, God, I've renewed my driver's license three times and I've never traveled. I've never owned even a bicycle. God will give you a car. Come on. Get a passport. Even if it's an East African passport. Renew it two times. The third time God will open a door for you because he's a way maker. Do something. Move a step. Lengthen your word. Come on. Lengthen your cords. Oh, I don't have money. Yet you police her for credit. Police her for a passport. Apply it. Some of you need for you to, lack on, to, to lengthen your cords this year, 2021. You may need to go back to school. If you have a bachelor's degree, enroll for masters. There are a lot of people here who have gotten master's degrees in this church. And several PhD in the last, in the last few years, in the last four years, we have had 11 people who started from whatever level they started. And now they are doctors with real PhDs, not the ones we find in church. With pastors. Every pastor now is a what? Pastor and doctor. Kimuliza, what did you write on your dissertation? What, did you, what was your thesis about? What did you write your thesis on? And doesn't even know what thesis is. He says, pardon? Some of them don't even know how to say pardon. They say button. <laughs> but they are doctor so and so. Go back. Tell your neighbor, go back to school. And you young people, study while your brains are still wet. Before you have three children, one on the tummy, the other one holding you here, and the other one on your back, before you decorate yourself with children, because your husband may be a serious guy who wants 11 of them. Go to school now. You may be a believer in children. And because you say it, I do, you have no choice. Study now. Who am I talking to? Everybody. Go back to school. My sister, you went to school. You went to, for your degrees, isn't it? It's a couple of years back. Can you stand on your feet? I want to talk to the young people. Yeah. Is it four years ago? She went to do a degree at 47. And she has been a teacher all her life. At 47. You, you are 17 and a half and you are saying, I'm done with school. 
No, you're done with life. God bless you, my sister, and go for master's and PhD. My sister, Jennifer, are you done? She went to school. She has been a teacher all her life. But today she's gone away. It's PhD orders. Lucy, can I use you? Can I, can I ask you to start? I know this is not right. Go for permanent head damage. PhD. Wait, JP. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and go for write books and publish your works and become a professor. So now you have to listen to agree. We agreed officially. I'm keeping social distance because I'm not must. We agreed officially your life, your latter life in retirement must be better than the other one that you lived before. I'll tell you what is easy. If you can't sit in a classroom, buy the book. And read it at home. JP, can you imagine You can read those books and shoot from the same platform without going to class. And you can also go to class and study something. You can go to an agricultural course and run out to raise chicken, out to raise pigs, out to raise this. Come on, let's go back to class. In our retirement, she can study agriculture, rotational agriculture. Yeah. Ask your neighbor, what are you studying? Where? What are you studying? I'm done with school. In 2021, number one, some of you may need to go back to school. Can I hear an amen as I quit from that point? Some of you may need to get another job. Tell your neighbor, get another job. Get another job. I love my job because I don't pay transport. It's across the road. Yeah, but they pay you 5000 a month. They pay you 7000 a month. And because you cross the road and you are alone, I have reported to work, you cross the road, you think it is God who is blessing you. Come on, get another job that is paying you better. Make applications. Some of you, you have been working, but if you have not been able, if your work, if the amount of money that you get from your job cannot make your ends meet, it may be the best thing you can do is to either get another job or become self-employed. Yeah. People may not love me for today because I'm going to tell you things that are very simple. But they will change your what? They will lengthen your what? Come on. Your cords. Get another job. Or start a business, number three. Start a small business. Some of you think starting a business is starting a company or starting a manufacturing industry. Start a business. A roadside business. Hire a kiosk. Hire a kiosk. Begin home delivery. Huba was started by somebody who lacked means to travel when he needed to go somewhere and he thought of making transport what? Available to anybody who wants it. Every company you admire today was started in a small thing. The only thing under the sun that starts on the top is a grave. And after six feet, they lose interest to dig it up. Everything else starts where? Down there. Start a business. Three or C or D. Is it D? Yeah. Increase your income. Increase your income. 
There are so many ways you can increase your income. And I thank God for Corona. For the first time, I thank God for Corona publicly. Because a lot of you discovered they can still sell things. They can still start small businesses and not lose their titles and not lose their dignity. You can do something that looks less than what you studied for and what you went to school for, but it has put money on your table. It has put money on your, pay, on your pocket. It has put food on your table. It has kept you going. Now, after corona is wound up like a blanket, don't abandon what has sustained you during the time of adversity. Build it into become a what? A business. As you go back to work. Come on. Hire somebody else to do it. I'll tell you of a story of a young lady who was selling things in the street. That's her career. She couldn't finish school. The parents could not support her. So she dropped in lower classes. And she started a business of selling clothes in the street. They see the kanju. Munajua kanju. When the count comes, when the soldiers or the police, the county police would come, they would run everybody with whatever they are carrying. You remember those businesses that you carry on your back and they can fit on your back? You remember those businesses? They would run. And one day God touched somebody to bless her to start a business. Today, she's making a lot of money in her business. She, worked, she took the same resilience into the small shop that she started. She never abandoned her roadshow or what. She went and got her sister and her two brothers and employed them to do what she was doing before she moved from the street into a what? Do you know where the money comes in the evening? She became an employer straight away. How many employees does she have? Three. That is multiplying, increasing her income. She secured the space that was next to her. And now she has how many businesses? Four. And how many employees does she have? Three. She's a self-employed. I'll never forget again. You can lengthen your cords. There's a sister. I told you this before. There's a sister who used to come to our lunch, our meetings from MTC. Thika Medical School here. Thika District Hospital. A young girl. I knew her because she was very dedicated. She never missed lunch with her blue uniform. She would come. And one time she disappeared before she completed. She disappeared. She was doing a certificate in nursing. She disappeared. I didn't know that she went to the United States. She got a green card. She went to the land of opportunity before it became African. She went to the land of opportunity. And I'm preaching. I'm invited to speak in a graduation ceremony of a gentleman from Naivasha called Kamau who was getting a PhD in mathematics. And there's this beautifully dressed lady who is the master of ceremony. And they are calling her Dr. So-and-so. I can't connect. At the end of the day, the service ends and she approaches me and she tells me, do you remember me? I said, no. She said, no, you are, be, you are my pastor for two years. I said, when? She reminded me. She asked me, do you remember that girl who used to come skinny, blah, 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 blah? You know, see, I said, yeah. She said, it's me. She was a serious doctor. I don't say that the others are not serious. She had gone, completed the fields of specialization, and now she was a specialist. The reason why she came to, to MTC Thika to do it is because she had not qualified to go to the university. So she came for a certificate course. But when she went to the United States, she started from certificate to diploma, diploma, 
to a degree, she discovered there was opportunity to go up. That is lengthening your what? Your course. Today, she's hired by a very big hospital and she's in charge of several departments. Thika prepared her for a certificate course. America lengthened our what? Our courts. Increase your income. And that is not by not tithing or giving your offerings. Increase it. Hallelujah. Increase it. Increase it. You can increase your income. Mama, can I say this? We wanted to buy a turkey in November. And we were waiting to go and buy it on a Thursday. A pastor from Banana came to visit us on Tuesday. He asked me, Dad, where are you? I said, I'm in the village. He said, can I come? Yeah, I'll come. November, last year. We were waiting for uh, Turkey to come on Thursday. He comes, he parks his car, and he opens his boot, and there's a male turkey at the, at the trunk, at the boot. I asked him, who told you that I wanted, we were to buy a turkey? He said, mm, this is for Thanksgiving. Turkey, November. We said, oh, then we're going to buy two female ones. He said, no, I've already ordered them. They'll be coming next week on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, he brings us two female turkeys. We have never raised turkey in our family. I've never seen a turkey. I saw over 3,000 chicken when I, was, when I was young. I saw a lot of cows when I was young. Over 3,000 goats and sheep when I was young. But I never saw a single one turkey in my family. And now I'm the, we are the owner, the proud owner of three turkeys. <laughs> that following week, a family that is seated in this church came to visit us. And they opened their iron vehicle and at the back seat was a white turkey. How many turkeys are those now? Four. The last three days, I was raising 21 turkeys. Those are chicks. 21 plus the four. How many are those? 25, and the third one is sitting on 15 eggs. So what is 24 plus 15? Why are you not telling me and we are increasing our income? How much? 39. November, December, January 17th. And I will shortly, we will shortly be proud owners. Now, what is the Lord telling me? To study a turkey farm. That will increase my what? Because whatever he does, what does the Bible say? Shall prosper. The next point, E. If you cannot increase your income in 2021 so that you can lengthen your courts and enlarge the place of your tent, E, then decrease your spending. Is this an economic class or is it a preaching time? Both. If you cannot increase your income, God knows I'm not lying. If I don't start a turkey time now, I'll miss my season. Because it's time for turkeys. And I discover the cheapest one is 6,000. The cheapest. The one that looks very skinny is 6,000. Man, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> if they multiply in that rate, then the pastor who brought me the first male turkey, when I sent him a picture of my turkeys, because they know me now. They, were, they can follow me with their cheeks, and I like raising them. When I send him the picture of my many turkeys, hey, I've not even known whether they are female or male, but they are many. <laughs> he told me, Bishop, what, is, what happens with your life? I have turkeys 
and they have not multiplied. I have not seen a, small, a single chick in my turkeys. They all kuagua, they don't give birth. They all, they all arch turkeys and they kanyanga them. They step on them and they die. You, I told him, now I'll bring you what? Turkeys. He said, no, I don't want the turkeys. I want the anointing of raising them that you have. You can increase. Your, if you cannot increase your income, my brother and my sister in 2021, do what? Decrease your spending. Let there be something left over for tomorrow. Decrease your expenditure so that you can enlarge the what? The place of your tent. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I want to finish this. Let's continue. Do that. The next point that I'll give you should be F. Deepen your prayer life in 2021. If you want to enlarge the place of your tent. If you want enlargement to find you. If I want you want restoration to find you. Deepen your prayer life. You can never experience the power of God more than your prayer life. Your prayer life sets the face of your experience with God. Change your prayer habits and your spiritual life will change and your priorities will change. The next one, because I have to hurry now and finish. Spend more time with your family. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your children are not permanent. They will leave your beautiful house. They will leave your beautiful beds unoccupied to go and stay on their own in a single room before they build a mansion of their own. Your wife is not a television set. Your children are not dummies in an exhibition. They are human. Your husband is not a breadwinner. It's the love of your life. Your wife does not need your money. She married you when you were struggling. You remember that time when you could not afford bread? She loved you. You are going on Route 11. Now you change cars like shoes. She doesn't care about your car. Stop giving your wife a car and think the car replaces you. Stop surprising your wife with a birthday gift by telling, taking her to one of the high-end estates and you, you tell her now you, you have cabara, you have already blindfolded her and then you take her to a very brand new, brand new five-bedroomed house which you will never sleep in yourself. You sleep two days in a week and you think she feels blessed. She never married a house. Your wife never married a house. She married you. Give your wife you. Give your children you. I know you are working for your children. I know you are looking for your children's school fees by working so hard, you know, everywhere you want. But let me tell you the truth. Soon, when you are busy like us, past pastors, we cancel everybody. We build the success of our ministries on the ashes of our families. That's the truth. We have time for every member who needs an appointment and have not time for my wife. We have time for every person's daughter or son who needs to see their pastor. And we don't have time for our own children. We build our success globally on the ashes of our families. It's time in 2021 to spend more time with your family. Because when I'm busy counseling other people's sons and daughters, there'll be a possibility my son or my daughter will be counseled. We'll be seeing a professional counselor. When I'm counseling them for free, 
she will be paying 5,000 per hour, or you will be paying 5,000 per hour to see a psychiatrist. Because I gave her a pastor and not a father. My wife doesn't care whether I preach until fire comes out of my mouth. She never loved the pastoral thing in me or the calling, although it's one of the things I forced her to admit she would marry two people, me and my ministry. But she married me. And when I am not there for her, our world crumbles. But when I'm seated there, even if I have no 10 shillings, even if I don't have a dollar or 10 shillings in my pocket, so long as this crazy pastor is seated at home and she can always turn around and see me, she knows it shall be well. Because the Bible says, tell the righteous, it shall be well with them. And that time there's no food. But so long as she can see me, she'll tell me, we are in this together. Spend time with your children. They're here. These children, they're not as young as you think. In 2021, spend time with your children. That is lengthening your what? Your courts and strengthening your stakes. They are your children for heaven's sake. Whatever we call street families, whatever we call street children, are sons and daughters who are fathers and mothers like you and me. It's only that they were never there for them. My sons don't care whether I'm a pastor or bishop or archbishop. The very right or the very left reverend. They don't care the titles I carry. Maybe I should have Dr. Professor Bishop Mbai. You know, they, they don't care whether I have all those titles that cannot even fit in a business card. All they want is to relate with me as their wealth. Come on. As their father. I'm going to say a very difficult thing today. You may hate me. And some of you may not come on Sunday, but I want you to come because I'm a servant of God. Let me say this when I'm here so that I can enforce the authority. Let me even go one step higher. Let me go another one higher. Let me stand next to the cross so that you know it is because of the cross that I'm saying this. If you are a single mother or a single father, in this congregation or watching me on television or watching me on Facebook Live from whatever part of the world, if you are a single mother or a single father, tell your daughter, tell your sons who their father or their mother is. No, I need to stay here because I'm going to continue saying I'm, I'm saved by the cross. <laughs> you never know what that would do to your son. You never know what that would do to your daughter. It will transform their world. Even if you are find yourself in a supermarket somewhere and their father is shopping on the other side with his family, Tell them, go and greet that man. Go and say hi to that man. Or go and say hi to that lady. Because she left when she was so young. Or he was very young, he never copied the picture of who mommy or daddy was. Tell them. Look at your neighbor and tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Stop lying to your children that their father or their mother is dead. And you know they are not dead. They are eating nyamachoma somewhere. 
I should stay there because this is serious. I have never said this in my preaching life, but I feel I need to say it. One day when your son and your daughter is with their father or their mother, one day, one hour, one day in their lifetime will transform their world. It doesn't matter how high and how they are anointed you are to hate that man or that woman, so long as that man or that woman is their father or their mother, show them their biological mother and their biological father. Let them connect with their rightful DNA. Because the day they will find out when they are 50 or 40 or 30 or 20 that the person you have called their uncle all the years, they have called uncle all the years, the good uncle who brings gifts during Christmas or the good auntie who buys them shoes, the day they will discover that the person they have called auntie when they have their own family and their own children, they will hate you for the rest of their lives. Connect them to their DNA and walk away and let the process. Man, I've never said that anywhere under the sun. How many of you agree with me at least even if agree with me that should be the case. Free your children. You are born again today. God doesn't impute any sin to you. You are the righteousness of God but for heaven's sake your son and your daughter deserves to know who their mother is or who their father is and to change their lives. Finally, brethren, it's not enough to know who your father is and who your mother is. Spend time. Create room in your busy business schedules, in your busy study schedules, in your busy ministry schedules, pastors like me. Create room and spend time with your children. Spend time with your wife. For heaven's sake, she's the KDC that you married. And you are the KDK that she married. Nothing has changed. She's still the love of your life. You picked her out of 8 billion people. You picked him out of 8 billion people. Spend time with her. Stop telling us that she has a bad breath. You are the cause of that bad breath. There was a time her breath was very pure. It changed in your hands. Stop telling her him that your shoes smell. You never had the smell. They are the same feet and the same socks that she used to put on the same legs. They never, you ignored the smell when you are in love, when you had fallen in love. Even now, Stop telling them that their umbilical cord is bigger than normal. You, it was still there. Stop telling them their teeth is not arranged properly. You, you loved the teeth when they were not arranged properly. Did they get new ones the other day? They were still the same. Spend time and connect husbands and wives. Spend time with your wives and connect together. If those children will live after 20 years, after 18 years, and they'll be like mine. And I'll forget the difficult time my mother, my, my, my wife had with our sons when they finished high school before they went to the United States to study in their universities. We planned one December to go for holiday. This is why I'm on mine here. I'm not talking about parables, this one. 
with our two sons. We have already made the bookings of the hotels we are going to go with all the beautiful beaches and everything else. She's, she's the one who tells, talks to them when she needs to persuade them because they may have plans. We will talk business with my children. We are, two C, we are three CEOs. We talk everything like a business venture. We talk, we are very good friends. But listen, I remember that day I will never forget. They taught mama, the car, we put the bags in the car, said, boys, she had mentioned that we are going to go a couple days. But that was it. Mother telling children, father telling children, this, we are going for holiday in Mombasa. Yeah. Tonight or Thursday. Karibu usema saatatu. When that day came, mama said, boys, where are your bags? Then they asked her, which bags? <laughs> she said, we, we are leaving for holiday. They said, we, we are not going. We have other plans. I remember my wife telling them, which plans? And I know you know what I'm talking about. Which plans? And I tell you the truth, we never went with them that time because they had made plans with their friends on how to spend their holiday. One of them, they were going for a tour. And they're not going to drink, they're not going to smoke. They, were, they are good friends. They had plans. From that day, we would make an application when we want to go together. We tell them, by the way, in the month of March, after Family Sunday, we, we are going to go somewhere because they need to contribute. You know, that's how my children are up to today. We started making deals with them. Not because they are unruly, no. They too are human beings. Spend time with your children when you can. You hear that, Steve, with your son? Spend time when you can with your child. One day they'll get out of the nest and you'll become, they'll be coming with their cars to visit you. And they tell you, by the way, mommy, we are not staying. No, you have to take tea. No. We have tea in the car. We have our hot cups. <laughs> we have our what? When did you start refusing mommy's tea? No, they're not refusing. What you don't understand is they moved on. And you stayed put in the same place. <laughs> Finally, brethren. <laughs> I told you I'm not going to make you jump on your seats. I'm going to talk to you as I expound the theme of 2021. You want enlargement to come to your life? You want to enter into strategic partnerships in this 2021? You want to lengthen your cords? This may be some of the things that you need to do. Let's go through all of them. Number one, you may need to go back to school. You may need to get another job. You may need to start a business. You may need to increase your income or decrease your expenditure. You need to deepen your prayer life. Spend more time with your family. Create and spend time with your children. You are the only mother they will ever know. You are the only father they will ever know. Don't deny them love. It is the cheapest thing you can give them love. L O V E. Love. And finally, brethren, Chau Kweli Sasa. Finally, give me a Bible, paper Bible. Familiarize yourself with what God says in this holy word. This is the contract you have and I have with God. If you can read a contract for buying land or selling land or even a contract for, land, for leasing a house, you read page by what? 
page by page so that you can understand what is in the contract between you as a tenant or, and the landlord or you as the landlord and the tenant and you make them sign this is our contract with God. It is written here. What God can do for you and can do for me is written here. What he cannot do it's written here. What the devil cannot do to you with his demons and sorcerers and witches is written where? Come on, here. What enemies cannot do for you or with you is written here. Build your faith and spend time in reading this eternal contract. And may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord do you good. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord prosper whatever you do. May the Lord bless you in the city and in the village. May the Lord bless you as you travel in by plane, by road, by hair, by sheep, by personal vehicles or public means. May the Lord cover you by the, under the pinions of his hands. May the goodness of God shine upon your lives. May the peace of God rule your hearts and your minds. May you walk in victory. May you walk in power. May your life never be the same again in 2021. May you enlarge the place of your tender. May you, my, my Lord and my Father, may you spread out the curtains of your tender, of your dwelling. May you lengthen the cords and strengthen the stakes, for you shall spread to the right and to the left. The Lord is about to increase you in proportions you have. Remember, God will give you what you never had. What life denied you, God will give you. What your father denied you, God will give it to you. What your mother withheld from you, God will give it to you. What your family never gave you, Jehovah is faithful, he will give it to you. May the Lord lead you. The blessing that your dad or your mommy denied you, the Lord God Almighty, parent number one, will bless you and your life will be blessed. I speak peace to each one of you. I speak joy and comfort to each one of you. May the Lord prosper you. May the Lord increase you. And may the Lord lead you and guide you to fields that are greener than the ones that you are on today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. I hope I'm a good pastor. This coming Sunday, I'll deal with the final one. It's the real strengthening the word. Come on. Yes, after you have enlarged the place of your tent, after you have, you know, spread out the curtains, and now you have lengthened the cords, now this coming Sunday, by the grace of God, I will deal with what? What does it mean? To strengthen your stakes so that you can start expanding, enlarging to the right and to the left. And that your descendants, whatever blessing God will give you is generational. That's why the Bible talks about descendants. The foundation that I said today and the foundation that you said today will go to your children's children's what? Children. For a righteous man lives what? An inheritance to his children's children.